Hey guys, Brent Hull here, going over to Thistle Hill with my buddy Richard. We're gonna check out that great craftsmanship from 1904 and talk about that passion for craft. Now, why am I bringing that up? Because we've got a Patreon page that for the last few months, we've been working on a podcast, we've got a Patreon page, and it's really a desire on our part to share what we know with you guys. There's a community out here, people that desire to improve the quality of their building. There's a link in the description below, please click that. And if you sign up before Black Friday, November 25th, you'll get a free t-shirt, also includes the print from an historic trade catalog. So check it out. Be sure to click on it. Now let's go over to Thistle Hill. Okay, you guys may know Richard from Finish Carpenter TV. Awesome channel where he's teaching all about you know, carpentry and how to do it. Really takes you through these hands-on videos. He's done a lot of work with our company now. So we coming back to Thistle Hill. We're just gonna walk through how did they do it? How was it built? Because this is an incredible house. This is about 115 years old, 1904. And so should be a great time looking at details. So let's go inside, check it out. So I've lived in Fort Worth my whole life. I've seen this house. Thought it was awesome, but what exactly are we looking at here? What style of architecture so is this? So, if 1904, it's kind of late Victorian, kind of early arts and crafts. So you'll see a little bit of arts and crafts inside. You'll see a little bit of Victorian. This, though, is Georgian revival. Okay, it's, okay. it's neoclassical. You know, the the brick is is three widths thick, right? A solid masonry exterior wall. You got corning. You got keystones. You got all this bonding of brick because you would have weaved it back together. And then amazing woodwork. I mean, that front entry door is it's awesome. Yeah, that, that big those, fan light. Yeah, the ionic capitals. And so the pretty detailing, fluted columns. So they don't cool make stuff. them like they used to. I'm telling you. Let's check it out. Yeah. OK, welcome home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this would be a home for sure. <laughs> You're gonna see that there's all different kinds of architecture and styling going on here. Like there's a little French room right there. You know, this is arts and crafts. You've got this really English, you know, Tudor thing going on in there. Got mission revival stuff, which right, it's 1904. It's right in the heart of all those changes architecturally. And so you're seeing a lot of different, different details. So in your opinion, based off everything you just said, does a house, like if you were to try to, try to replicate an awesome historical house today, would it need to follow room to room one architectural feeling? Or, or can you take the liberty to kind of do what they've done here? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, the quick answer is you can do whatever you want. Right. The, uh, the, the historic precedent, right, is for a variety of different things. And so an English carver told me one time, he goes, it's only in America you have a French room and an English room and all these different things happening. Yeah. So maybe that's an American phenomenon. It is typical, and yes, there's nothing wrong with doing that. Okay, so. good. One of the things I love about learning from the past and coming into these things is notice that this beam ceiling and notice how close those beams are together. Now this is something I rarely see in new houses today when people do beam ceilings, but you've got this larger beam on the outside, you got the, this beam being you know, second in size, and then the third one going up into that smaller beam. A variety of sizes, but also how close they are together. This is the European model. This is how it would have been done in Europe when it was really you know, load-bearing and structural. So, and that would have all been timber frames. So, it's just little little subtle things like that that I've seen and I, you know, that's the way to do it. If you're gonna do a beam ceiling, you know, this is an excellent example. Yeah, because this is communicating that is supporting the yes. second floor. Th yeah. That's essentially the subfloor. It's not trim, right? Guys were, you guys will throw, <laughs> you know, three beams in a space this big and you're yeah. like, really? And so this is the way to do it. I've done that. <laughs> it's it's, it's true, high. yeah, it's I know. You know. So this is a, entry hall just a grand you got this high wainscot it's all white oak quarter sawn yep quarter sawn white oak so you know we talked about fireplaces before you know here we've got an all tile fireplace most of these fireplaces are plaster or some other material like that because of fire was such a big problem at that time and so you know now we've got this room right with this this kind of french paneling the level of architectural detail on stuff like that is just you know off the charts and so so would this this be wood? Would this be plaster here? Yeah. So it looks like 
Yes, the way that's split and everything else, it looks like an applique, okay? So mm -hmm. there's a company, Decorator Supply, which is a 100-year-old company, 150-year-old company. They had master carvers from Europe making a bunch of, of these materials and details. Most likely, that's what it is. Now, if this was in Europe, that probably would have all been hand carved. But in America, this is that's why it's called the Gilded Age in America, as opposed to the guild is just a gold leafing right on top, not pure gold. It still looks great. Oh my gosh! Know? Well, the proportion scale is really pure. And that what that tells me is even if you don't get architectural details in the purest form that they originally done and if you get the proportions right, I mean that's the that's a big deal. Amen. Before we go up that stair, which is magnificent and look at the volute at the, the this thing right and look how this would have had to been made right that that is a carved piece that finishes thing because you can't get a tool in there to do that and so you know just how they made all this or i guess they made it from a couple different parts it's yeah just, it's like one two and then it picks up right here it's just you know it's awesome <laughs> yeah. it really is awesome Super, this is the most grand staircase I've ever seen. <laughs> like, I'm just waiting for Leonardo DiCaprio to turn his head and look at me. <laughs> yeah, I know, it's uh, same, roughly the same period. But yeah, I mean, that, I mean, that Palladian piece right there is, is, I mean, magic. Well, here's another thing I love. This, this is the right way to do a columned, you know, divider between rooms. And sometimes you'll see columns that run right to the ceiling, but here you've got an entablature, right? And a panel, paneled bottom to that entablature that runs across. So it goes architrave, freeze, and then the cornice wraps up into there. But you've got these beautiful columns, a square pier, round column. That's the classical way of doing that. Yeah. And it really helps divide these spaces visually. You know, it's, it's awesome. So when we did the History Channel show, Lone Star Restoration, this was the pool table we restored. Okay, nice. so this pool table was in the basement. And literally, and this really happened, it kind of, we, it looked like fake TV stuff, but we <laughs> literally were down there and I, and I looked at like a leg from that and I said, that looks like a pool table. And literally started pulling these pieces apart and looking at the different things. And then sure enough, we found the three slate pieces and it had all been taken apart and put in the basement. And so it had been odd. there for, you know, 40 years and it's covered with dust and we actually did restore that. So that was a pretty cool story. That is awesome. And now it stays in here in the original. Is this yeah. where it would have been? Yeah. yeah, yeah, this was always a pool thing. Oh, okay, so this is really interesting because this whole paneling that goes in this room curves over here, which is extremely hard to even do with modern technology and tools. And to see, I always lose my mind when you come into these old houses and it's like, you know, Richard, you know, trim this out. And it's, they hand me like a chisel and a saw. I'm like, what, what do you mean? Like, just the level of craftsmanship to do this is Well, is and, and, these, and these windows are all curved too, right? The sashes so the, Yeah, so you've got a, you know, curved bottom rail on top well, and curved glass. And so we've had to make curved glass for some courthouses and stuff. And they literally are blowing the glass, heating it up, laying it over a form. The glass falls over that form. That's how you get that. It's pretty cool. Wow. You gotta be on the money with that. <laughs> <laughs> Another beam ceiling, which is really nice. This one actually has wood in between. And those those tiny and groove boards up there are communicating the, the floor again. Right, like exactly. That's the floor exactly. you're walking on up there, yeah. in theory. Exactly. Cool. Let's go upstairs. These treads are outstanding. I mean, <laughs> all this fleck, what do you call that, tiger stripe? You're seeing the rays and the grain that's going coming through there. But I mean, that looks like a solid piece of wood, that whole thing. I mean, it that's does. freaking unbelievable. Yeah, because this, yeah, this stripe goes all is the continuous. Way through. And that, I mean, that's very sought after today. And it's oh like- Oh my gosh, that is such premium wood. <laughs> it's just, you can't get anything better than that. The, the height of this handrail. <laughs> yeah, Don't uh, get too close to it. <laughs> so I've done a lot of videos on porch rails, handrails, and historically, just like this one, right? It's probably two feet tall, three, yeah. 30 inches, whatever, is really low. Now, why did they do that? Because historically, it lines up with the height of the pedestal on a column as it goes up. Problem is, it looks beautiful, but if you did a real high one and it was like 42, it looked like a cage. Yes, And all yeah. of a sudden, this would not be as dramatic or as pretty. A practical way of handling this is to do like a thin iron bar that goes up to the code. Yeah, and it brings it up to modern code. Right, exactly. And I actually seen that, there's that Georgian Revival house that you guys built from the ground up. 
I saw that that rail. So it came up out of the handrail. It was yeah, a black rail. Exactly. And it, it exactly. made it safe, but you still communicated the beautiful look. Yeah, that's real. Yeah. Then here's more curved panels on that, that little curve there. So one interesting thing I noticed as we were coming up these stairs is another gentle sweep. I love once a carpenter sits here and thinks about this and figures out like, he could have easily mitered it. He could have easily made a, a cut, found the degrees, but he didn't. He went ahead and just made this sweep and you can see that that style right there is swept too, this panel. Those are the kind of things that you just don't see anymore. It's an extra level of care and it's just, I don't even think it was necessarily something that the, the craftsman said, I gotta get creative at how to do this. I don't think they would have accepted anything but that, right? It's such a graceful way of doing it. I think that they, you know, that's what it was expected back then. And if we wanna build better today, with our clients have to ask for more. And that kind of detail, it's beautiful, right? But it is more work. Notice what's happening in these rooms. We've got, we have quarter sawn white oak here, but then when you come into the room, look what happens here. We got mahogany. And so there is, you know, during that Victorian period, they would oftentimes have different woods. We were talking about different styles of rooms. They had different woods. And so this room has mahogany. One thing I noticed is see that, that miter right there. The spring angle of that crown follows that, which oh, is that. That really nice? amazing. So you get that same angle, that same line through casing and crown. Yeah, and look how they carefully brought these two together, right? Sometimes yeah. when things collide and stuff like that, it can be an ugly connection. But as you're pointing out, you've got a real pretty line there and then these, these connect and pull together. It's almost like someone had a passion for craft. <laughs> <laughs> Come in here, if you thought this was cool, let's let me show you in there. All right, so if you thought the mahogany was cool, check out this room. It's all bird's eye maple. Look at this door. But I mean, the cool thing is, is that the mantle's bird's eye, this furniture's bird's eye. So it's like the whole, this whole suite of room is all bird's eye maple, which is cool. And that, that's that virgin growth right. lumber, right? Yeah, That's where exactly. you, you get all this figuring. Yeah, that everything. tight old growth lumber that, that's just in such good shape. All right, man, what did you think? Pretty awesome. I think we could probably be in there for a whole day <laughs> looking at stuff. That's... Yeah, I mean, there's a lot to learn from the past, you know? It's just why I get, I geek out about it because, you know, how did they make some of those things? How did they do it? You know, when you think about the tools they were using and everything else, it's just, it's mind boggling. It's so much more impressive for the time it was built because it's even impressive for today yeah. with everything that we have available. Yeah, no doubt. But, yeah, I love when you take us on tours of these old houses and really appreciate it. If you're not following Richard, be sure to follow him. Finish Carpenter TV. I think everybody in America already follows him. He's got a huge following. It's, he's an awesome guy. We're going to do a bunch of stuff together. Thanks for joining us on this tour. I'm Brent Hull. Thanks for watching. See you guys.